In this video, let's see another subtopic of differentiability. The definition of differentiability has been already studied in the previous video. This video is dedicated to geometrical meaning of differentiability. That means if continuity means that the graph would be such wherein you can always draw it without lifting the pen or pencil, what kind of graph or what is the geometrical representation and meaning of differentiability term? Now, differentiability is unlike continuity, something related to the tangent. Continuity was not related to tangent at a point, differentiability is. Let's read out the introduction to it and then we'll start with the actual analysis and theoretical approach. Now, consider fx defined on AB. So, this tells me that I have a function which has the name as fx. It is defined on the open interval AB, fine. Let C, Fc. Now this is a part of coordinate geometry, C is the x coordinate, Fc is the y coordinate or I say that C is the abscissa of the ordered pair, Fc is the ordinate or the y coordinate of the ordered pair. Be the point on the curve y is equal to fx. Now you have this Cartesian plane x dash x y y dash is given to you. This is the curve, this red ink is the curve y is equal to fx. You see that this is the curve and there is a point p on this curve. I darken it, this point is P and it is C comma FC. C comma FC means C is the X coordinate, FC is the Y coordinate. And next is what? Let Q C minus H, F C minus H. Let Q C minus H, F C minus H be another point. So if P is here, to the left hand side, slightly left, H units left is the Q point and that Q point has the X coordinate C minus H and it has the Y coordinate F C minus H. Basically, if here it is C, this distance is H, so it should be C minus H, that you understand. Similarly, going forward also we have a point, that is point R, so here again if I have this H units distance, so it should be C plus H, right? Now it is C plus H, F C plus H is another point and these are the neighboring points on the left hand side, LHS in short is left hand side, P left hand side is Q, P right hand side is R, so LHS and RHS of P, that is given to you. Now differentiability will be what we will see later, but first let us see if P and Q are joined by a chord, see this dotted line is a chord what will be the slope of this chord? I already know what is the calculation for slope. Slope of chord PQ. I want you to find out the slope of chord PQ. Now PQ is here. This curve, I am assuming that it is joined by these two points are being joined by a chord. These two points on the curve are being joined by the chord. So what is PQ? PQ is FC minus H minus Fc upon C minus H minus C. Cancelling this, we have what? We have Fc minus H minus Fc upon minus H. This is chord PQ. Next is chord PR. What is the slope of PR? Write it here, slope of PR. And I say that my PR is another chord. What is the calculation of slope? It is y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1. Fc plus h minus Fc minus Fc upon c plus h minus c. Cancelling certain things which get cancelled. It is Fc plus h minus Fc upon h. So you have basically the slopes now of both the chords PQ and PR. My next task is what? My next task is to do what? It is to assume that my Q tends towards P and then similarly assume my R tends towards P. Basically, if Q tends towards P, means Q is going near to P, Q going near to P, near to P, near to P, there will be a time when P and Q will always be actually joined in such a manner that we have a unique tangent. And that unique tangent will be somewhere like this. When Q tends towards P, when R tends towards P, basically what is there? The points are actually going near, 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 near to P. And there will be a point when we have a tangent. And mind it, that tangent will be unique. How and why? Let's see. 
I say that when my slopes are known to me, the limiting case for chord PQ is what? The limiting case of chord PQ is when Q basically reaches very near to P. See, slope of the tangent at P, which is the limiting position when Q tends towards P. When Q tends towards P, the slope of the chord will be there and that will be the limiting position. Similarly, when slope of the tangent at P, which is limiting position when R tends towards P, there will be only two conditions, right? So, I say that for derivability, derivability will be possible when what will happen for derivability, I have the left hand derivative equal to the right hand derivative. That is what I will be doing. So, the left hand derivative will be basically what? It will be limit. What we are going to do? f of c minus h minus f of c upon minus h. This is the left hand derivative and h is tending to 0. Similarly, what is the right hand derivative? These both should be equal, right? It will be limit h tends to 0 f of f of c plus h minus f of c upon h. And you see that these are in basically h. These slopes were equal, putting the limits will give me what? Putting the limits will basically give me the derivatives, left hand derivative and the right hand derivative. So this c minus h, f c minus h, c minus h, f c minus h will be when q tends towards p. So this happens when q tends towards p. Similarly, c plus h and all will happen when r tends towards p. Now if differentiability says that these two have to be equal, and we see that these both are coming equal. That means the tangent drawn, the limiting case of the slope of the tangent drawn from Q to P is equal to that from R to P. And since these are equal, that means how many tangents will exist? Not more than one. In fact, a unique tangent would exist. A unique tangent would exist at P. And why a unique tangent would exist at P? Because the left hand derivative is equal to the right hand derivative. So now you understand that the geometrical meaning of differentiability is what? It is nothing but the relation with the slope and the relation with the unique tangent at that particular point which we are talking about.